We've grown up together. We'll die together too, as sisters and stars. She's my dear. I love this experimental take on the cinematography with the double exposure and the thoughts on the mind being overwhelming and stacking above one another. And it seems like, you know, there's 80,000 thoughts that goes through someone's mind a day. And this is kind of seems like overwhelming amount hitting you all at once. And it's reflective of what we consume, of what we hear, uh, people we see. And you kind of see this person short circuit, so to speak, um, after being overstimulated and overwhelmed by the experience. It was visually striking. I love the fact that the camera was grainy for many of the shots. It was so eerie and worked really well with the echoey, poetic type voices that overlapped, as if it were some kind of trippy, anxiety-based nightmare or dream. Very memorable, as a face was shown in fast, quick shots, blinking and the mouth talking at a rapid pace. Very stimulating to watch. What they did with the special effects with this was really, really good. I like how they did a lot of it with a fast forwarding effect. And I thought that that was really cool. Cinematography wise, they did such a cool look with how it almost looked like aged film. And I was really impressed with that. I liked how that went. Um, I wasn't really sure what was going on, but I thought that it was really interesting. Like I kept wanting to watch it. I couldn't really look away. Which sounds like several stories being told at once. Um, it's also very different from the scenes where you have sort of this duet style sort of movement uh, with this chaotic modern style dance with these two women um, interconnecting with their bodies and what have you. Um, although I don't fully understand the um, meaning or symbolism behind the piece, I can definitely appreciate the experimental eye and the risk taking. It felt like a mix between an experimental film and interpretive dance. And um, what I really found interesting about this one was its use of the, I want to say, I'm unsure whether it was supposed to be diegetic or non-diegetic, but uh, the sounds themselves were very interesting. I assume it's diegetic in the sense that we're inside her head and these are the voices that she's hearing. Um, it had a very uh, surreal kind of feel to it in that sense. The beautiful thoughtful as well as the performances. On top of that, there is also like a great cinematography, something that really keeps you there. And it gets you moving, you know, moving with the characters. Um, I think overall it was very interesting to see how this relationship uh, developed. And uh, from start to finish, in just a few minutes, we could really see a full character arc. And that's, that's what is the most powerful part, the most powerful feature in this uh, short film. Uh, so overall it was a very well done short, great cinematography, great direction, excellent music, but above all, excellent chaotic with the repetition of the words um it went in i think that's how it's supposed to be feel feeling because the wardrobe looked like it was soaked in blood like something bad had happened there wasn't a lot of exposition to ex really explain what kept seeing her go back and forth with a, another woman um but you're still not really sure what was happening I do think it worked for that reason, especially with the music. It was supposed to give a sense of confusion and chaos because it's one of those things. I know they said fear is in the bones and fear is her. And I think that does put a part of human nature into it where sometimes we're our own worst enemy. But at the same time, the way she actually looks is throwing you off because it looks like something bad really did happen. And did her fear lead up to it? Did, is it all internalized fear and this is just what she's seen in the mirror? There are several questions that could be asked with this film. So I think it's all really up to interpretation.